Welcome back to my channel. For whatever reason, I have decided to participate in the 100 day watercolor challenge. The one I've chosen is themed. One of my friends is actually hosting a version this year and every day has a prompt. And so that's making it a little bit easier. It's done by week. And so week one is all waterfalls. And so in this video, we are going to look at all seven waterfalls I've painted for this week and look at what palettes I used. First up was Cosmic Creations. I used I think six colors and I will leave all the color information in the description just for the ease of this video. I think it makes it easier if I leave all the information below. I hope you enjoy watching. Let me know what other palettes you'd like to see me do this challenge with. I used I think four in this video, maybe five. But I'm sure that as this challenge progresses for the next 93 days, I will be reaching for various other palettes that I own. For the second palette, I reached for my Holbein paints and decided to do a pretty similar painting but with some different colors. I think it's the Holbein Botanical palette that I have in the 0.5 mini pants. And so I just decided to have some fun with it. I knew everything was going to have to be pretty much custom mixed because it's pretty much just the basic colors I have, but it was still quite a lot of fun to do. And I was at this point realizing that I was pretty sure I was going to enjoy this challenge. I wasn't sure before I started it that I was actually going to be able to get into like the groove of it and enjoy it, but by this point I was pretty sure that I was going to have a good time with this challenge. The third palette I decided to use was Art of Soil Paints. 
which aren't paints I use all that often in paintings. I think I've only done one painting for this channel that was just Art of Soil paints. That being said, they are quite fun paints to use, and I do enjoy when I get to use them, though they don't mix particularly well with other paints. So a challenge like this, where it was just using paints from one brand, the way I've decided to do week one, seemed to work quite well. I also realized that I was going to have to mix because most of what I've got from Art of Soil came from a grab bag, and so I don't really have a huge color selection from them. For number 4, I decided to use 31 purple fish paints and started by pulling 6 colors from my palette that I thought were going to be what I needed, though I did leave my like neutrals palette out in case I did end up needing to grab some other things.
For number five, we were back to my Cosmic Creations palette. Purely because my studio palette was still an absolute disaster and the thought of tackling that was a bit too much. So I went back to a palette that I know pretty well and felt confident in painting with. I have a feeling that my studio palette is going to come into play in the next series, but for now we were going with pre-made palettes that were just like chilling around my desk. For number six, we went to one of my smallest brands in my collection, but one of my favorites because they are a local shop, which is Beam Paints. The one thing about my Beam palette is that everything was going to have to be custom mixed because I've got their sort of primary set, which is called Spectrum 11, and then I've got some random paint stones and colors I like, and so I knew that everything was going to be a custom mix, especially trying to get a brown. Eventually I got there, but it took some trial and error, though I was quite happy with how the piece turned out, and it was an important reminder to keep scrap paper next to me while painting so that I can test colors. I've gotten out of the habit of keeping scraps on my desk, but it is so helpful, especially in something like this where I was trying to create a brown out of a really bright green and a bright red and it just wasn't working.
For the final painting, I decided to go back to the Holbein palette, mostly because I feel like I don't actually paint with it by itself often enough, and I had quite a lot of fun the first time I painted with it, so I decided to go back to it. There isn't much to say. It was fun. It was a good mental workout to use these palettes in a different way. Do I think painting waterfalls are going to become part of my daily repertoire? No, but it was definitely an interesting thing to approach it, and I'm looking forward to the next several weeks of challenges. I'm a bit scared for some of them, but I think it's going to be quite interesting. Here are all seven days together. I think day one and day four are probably my favorites. I love the trees in day four. And I love the white space that day one has. I'm still not great at adding white space into pieces, but I'm hoping that I'll get better as this challenge progresses. As you can see, I didn't tape off the border like I did in the October challenge, which saved a whole bunch of time and also saved a whole bunch of tape. So I think that'll probably continue. I might tape some of them, but I think I'm probably going to leave most untaped. I hope you enjoyed watching. Let me know what you want to see next. Let me know what palettes you want me to use, because there are many in my collection that probably don't get as much love as they should.